human sciences may be quite advanced, and yet the human brain remains a mystery. We don't know much about our own brains. We don't even have a full picture of how the nerve cells in the brain connect with one another. Professor Nancy Yip, a top neuroscientist acclaimed internationally for her outstanding research into neurotrophins and how they promote the survival, development and maintenance of neurons in the nervous system. In recent years, she's focused her research on communication among neurons. She has made important contributions to our understanding of the molecular mechanisms of brain development and plasticity, and the causes of related neurological disorders. Neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease have been the key area of her research. 神經退化性疾病，因為佢即係影響嘅人係好多咯。淨係亞爾茲罕物症，而家係誒講緊全世界係有三千五百萬個病者咯。咁二零五零年嗰陣時將會係超過一億咯。咁所以係影響好多人咯。作為一個科學家，即係如果我有能力幫到診斷啊，或者甚至治療咧。我係希望可以做得到。In 2004, Professor Yip was awarded what is popularly known as the Nobel Prize among women scientists, the L'Oreal UNESCO Award for Women in Science. This award, widely regarded as the highest achievement for women scientists, is an endorsement of Professor Yip's many years of hard work and her contribution to her field. This recognition and encouragement from her peers is a vote of confidence for Professor Yip and her team, motivating them to strive for even greater achievements in scientific research. For Professor Yip, it was certainly gratifying to receive the award, but it also inspired in her a sense of mission and determination to work even harder for the good of humanity. Professor <laughs> 做一陣咁又做下其他嘢，然後翻嚟做，我覺得一定要非常之投入咯。因為而家其實科學嘅進步係好快。呢、这個就係 IBA 1就即係 same microbe 咁就發覺佢 AB 就。It certainly is not easy to keep up in scientific research. Professor Yip believes that a scientist needs great determination and immense perseverance. 我哋做嗰啲實驗咧，失敗多過成功。咁所以一定要有相當嘅堅持，同埋明白點解會失敗，而喺嗰度學習，令到我哋下一步咧做得更加好。So to ask that a young person be undaunted and resolute, dedicating a lifetime to scientific research, is no easy matter. Most university students would rather work in other professional fields. Very few choose scientific research. It's a long and trying road. Nancy Yip is one of the very few. She was born in Hong Kong and completed her primary and secondary education in Hong Kong. There are seven children in her family. Nancy and her elder sisters all studied at St Mary's Canossian College. Her eldest sister was actually her school teacher in Primary One, and was particularly hard on her. Nancy's eldest sister had already been admitted to university, 
But there was a family to feed and younger siblings to care for, so as a matter of family duty, she decided to teach instead of study. The sacrifice she made for the sake of her family deeply moved Nancy. Her eldest sister has passed away, but Nancy still misses her in awe at her selflessness. This spirit of sacrifice is very important to a scientist. Influenced by her eldest sister's altruistic sacrifice, throughout her school years, the young Nancy always studied hard and received excellent grades. She developed a particular interest in biology and chemistry during secondary school. Upon completion of her secondary education, Nancy was awarded a scholarship to study at a university in the US city of Boston. Her undergraduate years and her time in graduate school proved to be a turning point for Nancy. In her final year as an undergraduate, she was involved in a research project related to the chemistry of penicillin. This project is what inspired the young student to commit to a lifelong path of scientific research. After completing her undergraduate studies, Nancy was accepted into a PhD course at Harvard Medical School. She feels that her time at Harvard had a profound effect on her pursuit of scientific research. Today, Professor Yip is meeting with Professor Richard E. Zygmunt, her PhD mentor. Together, they revisit the campus and lab where they work together. She was my second student. Here at Harvard, I had eight students. They were all unique. But Nancy had really an extraordinary drive, discover things and uh, do science. Well, she was really an extraordinary student. She uh, worked amazingly hard. She was very organized. Alice used to be here. That, that bench is my bench. That was your whistle. That's my territory. And nobody can touch it. Nobody can touch it. This is our territory. When I was studying, I was in the library. So my bench is that bench. Yeah. 
。咁其實不嬲都知道咧，其中一個重要嘅方法咧，就係細嘅一個 chemical messenger。咁我嘅博士嘅論文呢，誒就係圍繞住有冇一啲另外一啲方法，令到神經細胞之間傳遞信息。我係揾咗一個新嘅方法呢，嗰種係叫做 peptide， 即係用 peptide 作為呢個傳遞信息嘅誒途徑囉。咁我哋嗰個發現係誒喺我哋嗰個領域嗰度呢，係誒即係得到同行嘅嘅稱讚係。誒好多咯。Professor Yip feels that learning and working in a multicultural context can stimulate scientists to think from different perspectives and lead to new ideas and bold hypotheses. In the 1980s, after Professor Yip obtained her PhD. She joined a biotechnology startup with a multicultural background and became its senior researcher. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
leaving Regeneron, I was frankly somewhat surprised because the research she was doing there was at such a high level and so exciting that I thought that she would um, want to stay there because in a sense uh, it was the greatest uh, opportunity for her. Did you used to do this? No. no I'm sure it was a very difficult decision because Regeneron was a very, very nice place to work and doing very important work. And if she went back to Hong Kong, first she'd have to find a job and she would start at the bottom of the ladder. But in the end, she decided to go back. I certainly supported her to go back. And the amazing thing that she went back as anybody would, as an assistant professor, she just kept fighting and she became an associate professor and then a professor and then the chairman and then the dean and now she's a vice president. Yeah, I mean, that's extraordinary. Uh, of all my students, she is certainly the person who has risen the, the most. And, you know, I'm very proud of her. In a sense, I was wrong to think that she wasn't going to be able to make a spectacular career for herself in Hong Kong, because she certainly has done that. And I think it's a tribute to her, uh, her skill and ability uh, that she was able to go to Hong Kong at a time when science in the United States was certainly um, flourishing in this area in a way that it wasn't in Hong Kong, but yet develop a, a research program that's uh, world class. Hey In 1993, Professor Yip accepted an offer to return to Hong Kong to teach at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, HKUST, which was only two years old. In the beginning, there were inadequate facilities, staffing and research infrastructure, but Professor Yip set to work building her own lab and research team. Gun Back in those days, Professor Yip and her team had to share the lab with other professors. They only had two benches to begin with. Generation 
。咁咧，於是乎我就好 excited 嘅，即係好好興奮，哇！個 lab 咁大啊，咁多位啊咁。咁咧我就做啲最低能嘅嘢啫，折紙盒啊嗰啲啊，入貼啊嗰啲就，咁但係我都好開心嘅。呢啲咩叫入貼啊？其實入貼咧，即係呢啲咧。一個個逐支逐支逐支喺一個大嘅包裝插入去。呢個難啲啊，一個窿細。呢個可愛，又眯埋眼都得。呢個有啲難度。即係你話你你估唔到係原來好似翻工廠咁樣嘅，即係一排人咁啊喺工廠裏工作，突然間係咁樣，其實做咗。即係你基本上你可能翻嚟做五六日，你可能有過一半嘅時間做緊啲咁嘅嘢。但我哋依啲就係做實驗嘅準備功夫啦，係好緊要嘅。哇！呢、這個有個窿，我係覺得做科研呢，其實唔會係一個人就足夠咯，係要團隊一齊去合作，所以、呃、建立呢個團隊就要大家有咁嘅認同咯，大家都係希望、呃、互相支持咁樣去將呢個科研做好。一個實驗室呢個研究嘅文化呢，就係、是、要一開始就要將佢建立好。每一個加入呢個實驗室嘅成員咧，佢哋都係認同呢個文化，同埋受到呢個文化影響，咁佢就成為呢個團隊嘅其中一份子。咁佢就會大家互相支持啊，大家一齊將科研項目去做好佢。Fanny and Amy both later earned their PhDs and continued their research at Professor Yip's lab. Over the years, they've conducted various research projects together with her and published a number of important papers. Lai Kuak On set up his own lab at the University of Hong Kong and moved on with his research and teaching. He has frequent exchanges with Professor Yip, which help advance the research in both labs. It is not at all easy to reach the level where the team is now. Limited resources and staffing in the beginning drove Professor Yip to focus all her effort on foundational research. By 2001, she and her team were able to publish a very influential article in one of the most renowned journals in neuroscience, Nature Neuroscience. Professor Yip's team first discovered that the protein CDK5, which is supposed to act in neurons only, can also regulate the functions of neuromuscular junctions, the synapse between neurons and muscle. This was certainly an innovative discovery at the time, but there was a more profound implication. The findings suggested that this protein may be able to regulate the functions and plasticity of neuronal synapses in the brain. This is an important mechanism in the regulation of our learning and memory. This article meant a lot to Professor Yip's team. Not only were they the first Chinese research team to publish in the Nature Neuroscience Journal, but after its publication, their work caught the attention of many researchers worldwide. Their research findings inspired the team with a new interest in the area of neural plasticity. They began to research what mechanism might influence the communication among neurons. Neurons 點樣可以增強神經細胞之間嘅溝通咧？我哋可能咧就有機會有一啲啊神經退化性嘅疾病，譬如好似啊阿爾茲海默症咧。佢早期嗰陣時嘅問題咧，就係因為誒依個神經細胞之間嘅溝通咧係出現咗問題。咁所以我哋嘅研究其實誒對明白阿爾茲啊海默症佢點解會有依個？誒病理嘅轉變係誒好有用咯，所以其實我哋嘅研究唔單止係誒基礎研究，而對呢個轉化嗰方面咧，其實係誒都有幫助。